Hey folks, it's Shane from Foreman TV. Today we're going to get a Tesla charger to charge a Nissan battery. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. So today we're back working on the EV components of my um, Porsche 911 EV conversion. Uh, if you're new to the channel and you want to get caught up, there's a video up above to give you some of the the most recent updates on that and um, yeah we've been working on various bits and bobs of the car mechanically and bodywork wise over the last few months back working on the electronics today so uh, a couple of months ago we were doing a bit of a, a dive into the tesla gen 3 charger um, i took that apart as much as i could but it got to the point where um, I couldn't really take it apart any further without damaging it and as I want to get this car on the road I made a decision just to not take it apart anymore and to get it working um, yeah uh, with it the way it was so uh, today I want to jump into how we're actually going to power it uh, or make it work and then see if we can get it to send some charge to our Nissan Leaf uh, battery pack 40 kilowatt hour battery pack so yeah, let's look at the charger quickly and how we're going to control it. And then we'll hook it all up and start doing some tests. So this is the board that I'm going to be using to control the Tesla charger. So this is a Tesla Gen 3 control board developed by EV BMW. Uh, so he's on YouTube here and also has, um, I guess, a web shop where he sells these sorts of things. Um, this is basically designed using the open inverted so inverter software that's been developed by Johannes Hubner to uh, control the Tesla logic board. So this one basically takes the kind of communications from the car. So it'll have CAN messages coming in as reporting on the, the battery status. You'd have your 12 volts and all that sort of stuff. Um, runs the logic on it and basically outputs the messages through to the um, the Tesla charger and then we've got a little Wi-Fi module here which allows us to kind of look inside at what's going on and see what the um, the charger is doing and, and monitor that whole process so yeah I know it's a little bit wonky here with the um, the different uh, module or different connectors it's it was designed for a specific housing uh, but you can't really get those at the moment just due to the general lack of availability of anything kind of electronics related at the moment. So the logic board that Tesla have for controlling this uh, charger is in here. It basically runs along the back side, whatever it is, of this um, this case and it's got data coming in from the car, from the battery and all that sort of thing there and then going out to the various parts of the, the board either through direct connections with the um, the logic board there or up to, up from here to control the high voltage junction box. Now, as we found out previously, getting these bits out to be able to access that to remove it is very difficult and risks destroying the charger, which I don't want to do. So therefore, what we are, cre what we are using is going to be remote. So it, it'll sit outside of the um, charger. And that's why we've got all this cabling routing out of the charger. So we're most of the way there in terms of we've got the wiring done on the individual uh, boards. Obviously, this needs to be tucked away for once we close up the, uh, the charger. But then we also need to get the other end of this wire um, with a connector on it so it can connect into this and then of course we need to get the um, this board able to speak to the car as well so that's things like you know where the CAN messages will come in where are the communications with the charge port uh, for the you know proximity and enable signals will come into force so looking a bit closer at the charger basically there's two, two um, connectors here this one is designed for the messages and stuff coming in from the car. And you can see the different circuits heading off different ways there. We've got our little um, can and all that sort of stuff. And then this one is for going into our charger and ultimately down to the individual boards there. 
and that includes our different power signals our 12 volt our 5 volt as well as um enable and things like the the further can messages to tell the boards what to do All right, let's see if this works. So first test, we're gonna apply 12 volts to the logic board, see if that feeds through to other things. All right, don't know if you caught that, but things blinked. So power made it to these things, that's awesome. All right, I'm gonna check via the Wi-Fi, just connected to this here, um, if there's any information coming in. So let's see. So we've got most things wired up. We've got the uh, individual wires coming out of our modules, uh, coming out to the logic board here. Uh, which is connected to the battery, so it's got power going through it, 12 volts. Um, and then I've also wired the a the old Type 1 charger from my um, original Leaf uh, drivetrain stack, and I've I've wired that in uh, to the neutral. And I guess it's phase three. Hopefully that won't create too much problem. I don't want to have to stretch this too far, but I can if I need to. Uh, and then we've um, wired in the proximity and enable pins from the Type 1 charger. Uh, we've sent those through to the logic board. All right, so we've got our Type 1 charge port. And we've got a Type 1 charger. Um, this is only a plug-in one. It won't give a huge amount of uh, juice, but let's see what happens when we introduce one to the other. All right, so we've had to set up on the floor because I don't have a long enough cable, but let's check out what we're doing here. So we've got our pack, two halves of our pack connected together. Um, this won't be like this in the real car, in, when it's in the car, this will have go via a um, breaker kind of box so I can uh, see, you know, just cut everything off uh, if I need to. But for testing, we've just got a bus bar. So then we've got our positive and negative attached and going into the positive and negative on the charger. We've got all of our kind of signal wires wired up going to our logic board. And then we've got our charging cables there. Um, so the live and neutral going into charger three on the whole thing. And that's coming back here. We've got our 12 volt battery pack. Nope, 12 volt battery for the, um, to power the logic board. Uh, so you can see the 12 volts going in there. And then what we've also got coming from there is the phase enable and, or the, yeah, the enable and the proximity signal wires to our type one charger port. And then we've got a type one charger here, which is plugged into the mains. So this is really exciting. I know it looks no different to anything I've just shown you, but this is the charger properly charging. It's doing five and a half amps on the um, current meter thing over there, cheapy flux meter. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's the battery charging, um, which is awesome. All right, so it was only a brief test. We definitely got power going from the battery cable into the charger, from the charger where it was converted from AC to DC and then sent through the battery. And I can see that happening on the software 
uh, on the charger. Now, what we need to do as a next step is um, get that working as part of a, a broader system. So obviously the charger and battery are the two big components here, but they're not the only things involved. Uh, the other main one is the uh, battery management system, the BMS. So there's the battery control module um, that goes alongside the battery and is all those tiny little wires that kind of hook into pretty much every single cell and tell, see exactly what's going on. Um, that needs to be hooked up. I want to hook up all the the other wiring uh, that goes around this, both to the uh, charging port, to the charger, uh, and to the, the battery, and then also look at, um, just probably test the high voltage junction box that was in the middle of the battery pack. So I'm going to use that as well for the um, for the Porsche, though I can't test that as part of a full system until we've got the um, everything in the car, but we can at least test it in isolation. So that's kind of these components here uh, that we need to to figure out. But yeah, um, so that'll be in the the next um, the next video. But um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this little one, just looking at how we're going to control the charger and how we will then look at getting it actually into the car. Uh, I really wanted to test these things outside the car just to make sure they worked um, because once they're in the car it's going to be they're going to be pretty inaccessible so we want to make sure that they they do actually function but yeah hope you've enjoyed it uh, if you like this sort of thing you're not already subscribed please consider subscribing um, comments likes always appreciated uh, but till next time thanks for joining us and we'll see you soon